What's up guys? I'm Amanda, the Botanical Burnett, and welcome to my channel. So today we're going to be talking about mold on your houseplants. Mold can occur on your topsoil of your plants. There's so many things that can contribute to the mold growth. If you have mold on your topsoil, it's usually an indication that there's an underlying issue with your plant. So I'm gonna go over today what causes the mold on your topsoil and also how to treat it. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's talk about mold on our plants. I have two plants here that are sort of propagations. I have this plant here, this poor little philodendron gloriosum that has just kind of gotten a little moldy. And then this one's a little bit harder to see, um, but I have this alocasia michelitziana, michelitziana in this container that's starting to get mold. It's really just perlite and a little bit of moss. So let's talk about what causes mold on your topsoil. One cause of mold on your topsoil is overwatering and poor drainage. Those kind of go hand in hand. For this one, I do have this in a little to-go saucer, but it does have several drainage holes that I've cut through it. Every time I water, it waters right through. So I don't think that's the issue with this one, but it could be for this one. This is in a glass jar with no drainage hole. Although it is easy to tell when you have your plants in a glass jar, it's easy to tell if they have enough water or not. And I do make sure that I dump out any extra water that might be kind of sitting at the bottom. But really, I mean, both of these, I think their issue is the next cause, and that is poor airflow, no ventilation. So when you have your plants in kind of an area that has really no airflow, not a ton of sun exposure, it is a perfect, little spot for mold to grow on your plants. So if you have your plants in an area that doesn't get a ton of airflow, doesn't get a ton of light, then you're gonna wind up getting kind of moldy plants from that. Also soil that's contaminated is also another cause for moldy soil. If you have old soil that you're kind of reusing, or if it's soil that had root rot in it previously, or if it just had issues, or if you even have just dead leaves kind of sitting on your topsoil, that can all also contribute to mold growth on your plants. Now, when you have mold on your plants, it is, it is a cause that there is an underlying issue, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's harmful to the plant. White mold is typically not harmful to the plant or us. Unless you do have a mold allergy, then you'll wanna be careful when you're treating it to make sure that you have a mouth cover. But really, to me, any mold is dangerous. You wanna just make sure that you're not inhaling any of this mold, you're not getting too close to it, and making sure that you're protecting yourself when there's mold present. I'm gonna go over step-by-step step on how to take care of these plants and basically show you a little magic trick that is the perfect treatment for mold on your soil that everybody probably has in their spice cabinet. So the first thing you'll wanna do is when you have moldy soil is you'll want to scrape off the first top layer. Now, be careful when you do this because it is mold. It is a, any mold, again, to me, I feel like is dangerous. So just make sure that you, you know, take precaution. If you don't use gloves like I am, make sure that you thoroughly wash your hands afterward. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to remove the top inch or two, depending on how big your plant is, but you'll see it will start to come out in chunks like that. You wanna make sure that you really just pull off any of that. Now this soil is very wet, so I think we're dealing with an overwatering issue. I also do think that this plant also needs to be in a brighter, more ventilated area. So I think just those, both of those factors really contributed to the mold growth on the topsoil. I do have a little root there. Let's see that. I 
And I do have like little roots right in here. So I'm gonna just take some of this soil from maybe the other side and then just lightly kind of put it over to make sure that the roots are fully covered. You wanna make sure that you go around the entire plant and remove all the first one to two inches of soil, which will leave you with a good clump like that. So I'm gonna kind of put that aside and discard it. Now, because we have some really, really wet soil, you're gonna to want to let the soil dry out. So I'm gonna probably check this plant within the next couple of days. I'll probably give it two to three days, check the soil and just make sure that there's no more mold. If there is more mold, then I would suggest to just completely repot it. So the one little secret weapon that I have for mold on your soil is cinnamon. Cinnamon is a natural antifungal. This is going to be the best thing for your soil. So what I do with the cinnamon is I just sprinkle it. Just sprinkle it on the top soil. I really make sure that I layer this whole plant with cinnamon just to make sure that no more mold can grow. I'll even put some on the chunk but really <laughs> thoroughly making sure that the cinnamon covers everything. Now, I know you guys may be thinking that that is a ton of cinnamon, but it's going to kind of sit on there for the next couple of days. After the soil dries out, I probably will just take another inch of soil, like fresh soil, and put it on the top and then maybe water it in the next few, probably give it a week or two before I water it again. But you can also add the topsoil on top of the cinnamon, totally fine. Um, and you can also water it through. The cinnamon is not going to bother the plant. The cinnamon is actually also a natural rooting hormone. So win-win with that as well. Cinnamon is literally my little secret weapon anytime that I'm dealing with plants. It's just such a good, thing to have in your cabinet and also it's becoming fall season and it's good to have cinnamon in your house and it makes your plants smell good so win-win you also use fungicide you can get like a fungicide spray that you just spray on top of the on top of the soil you can also use a mixture of baking soda and water and spray it on the top of the soil as well i just find cinnamon's cheap and effective so i like to use cinnamon and kind of go from there. Now, again, if this winds up still being moldy after a few days, I'm going to basically repot this whole thing and just kind of go from scratch. So that's done. So we're gonna start with this one. So I accidentally <laughs> deleted the end of this video. So I'm basically just gonna go over what I did. So you guys saw me taking the cinnamon and kind of putting it over the philodendron gloriosum. And I also put it on the Michelitziana as well. You guys did not see that. Um, I basically just did the same process, just sprinkling it over the top of it and just making sure that the whole surface area is covered. So I removed any of the moldy perlite and then I just kind of topped it off with cinnamon. So let me show you guys what they are doing now. It's been a week. It kind of sucked that I lost that half of the video, but it's actually kind of nice because I can give you guys an update. So here is the Philodendron Gloriosum. So I know that you saw it in that video, I did remove the first top inch of soil just because it was super, super wet and super saturated. I wanted to kind of get that airy, kind of air it out. Also, it was really moldy as you guys saw, like I just wanted to make sure that it kind of removed all the mold, anything like that. And I wound up before watering this, I watered this uh, about a day ago. You can see it kind of got a little dried out, <laughs> but it's perking back up. But I watered this like a day or two ago. And before I did that, I actually put another fresh one inch layer of soil on the top just to 
kind of just even that out. I was actually nervous about removing the first inch of soil just because the roots are not super deep yet. Like this Gloriosum chunk hasn't really established yet, but it's it seems to be doing okay. Um, I will probably wind up moving this out of this container. Um, I don't know if it's maybe the fact that it's in a plastic container and it's like really holding on to moisture. I did move both of these plants in my windowsill, so it's getting plenty of sunshine. I think that's why they maybe got a little forgotten just because I don't really check my windowsill and also they're getting a lot more sun than they normally do. So you'll see with the Michalitziana that uh, one of the older leaves is starting to kind of die off but this one seems to be doing okay. Like I said, it's just a little, it's a little dried out, but hopefully we can bounce that back because it's just so cute. It's just a cute little, cute little plant. It's just, I love this thing so much. So hopefully this will bounce back and we won't get any more mold. Um, I do want to mention that I actually left the cinnamon. So the cinnamon's probably like halfway down. I left a cinnamon on the top layer and I just put the fresh soil on top, just to kind of clarify that. And then with the <laughs> propagation that you did not see, here is my Michalitziana. So as you can see, this got a little dried out too, like it's a little limp, um, but it has a little bit of browning or yellowing on the tips, which is normal. It's I think it's just gonna start to have to adjust to the windowsill. Um, my big Michalitziana lives maybe a foot off of the windowsill, so maybe I might move it kind of next to it, like next to the mother plant, but um, we probably might lose this leaf. I don't know. I'm gonna probably snip the tip again just because like, I don't know. I'm weird like perfectionist and like yellow tips or like brown tips just drive me batty. So I just want to make sure that I just like kind of remove that. <laughs> but I also think because it's living in perlite and moss, which this is all cinnamon by the way, <laughs> because when I watered it, the cinnamon just got all through the whole plant. But um, as you can see there, it's just full on cinnamon. I'm probably gonna wind up moving this to soil soon just because I don't want it to live in moss. I don't want it to get super used to moss. So um, I'm probably gonna wind up repotting it soon. But I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update and also end my video because I was a dumb dumb and deleted it. But that's basically it. I did wanna clarify with the cinnamon. I actually used a regular like spice cabinet cinnamon. I know there's a different type of cinnamon. I can't think of the name right now or I probably can't even pronounce it. But there is a, another type of cinnamon that you can use. Um, a lot of people do it with horticulture. It's just not as like commercialized and it's a little more organic. And I think it's a little more concentrated if I remember correctly. I have never had an issue with the regular cinnamon that you can get at your grocery store. So, I mean, you can do either way. I've never tried the other type of cinnamon, but I mean, like I said, I've never had any issues with the store-bought cinnamon as well. So I just wanted to just kind of like throw that out there. I know there's gonna be people out there that are having that question because they might see that here and there, but um, in my experience, the regular cinnamon has been fine. That's it for today. Let me know in the comments if you have ever had this happen to you and what are some tips and tricks that you do instead of cinnamon that will help combat moldy soil. Well, that's it for today. I hope you guys all have a great day and stay botanical.